Today I want to talk about a recent event in the Canadian Parliament, where the entire chamber stood up and applauded an Ukrainian Nazi. Also in the Canadian Parliament was Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of the Ukrainian regime, that also applauded the Ukrainian Nazi and even made a salute very reminiscent to the German Nazi salute. Let's start by checking the biography of the Ukrainian Nazi invited to the Canadian Parliament. His name is Yaroslav Hunka and he was part of the Nazi SS Galician Division. That's right, the SS, the most brutal Nazi division, responsible for the biggest atrocities the Nazis ever committed, like burning women and children alive. And now let's see how the Speaker of the House in Canadian Parliament presented this Ukrainian Nazi to the chamber. We have here in the chamber today Ukrainian Canadians, Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians did you notice that part? He said that this old man fought against the Russians in World War II. Well, by that alone, anyone with the slightest knowledge of history and with a couple of brain cells working knows that whoever fought against the Russians during World War II can only mean one thing, that they were fighting alongside the Nazis. But in fact, the level of ignorance of the Canadian speaker and parliament goes beyond that, because not even the Ukrainian Nazis were fighting against the Russians. They were fighting against the Soviet Union, which included Ukraine at that point in time. In other words, the Ukrainian Nazis killed everyone that wasn't a Nazi, including Ukrainians that were fighting in the Soviet army, not to mention Poles and Jews in general. Note that not a single person in Canadian Parliament even doubted what this very ignorant speaker of the House said. They all applauded without issues. Having said all this, we can analyze the situation in two ways, and both are equally bad for the Canadian political system. The first way to analyze this is that they are so dumb and so ignorant that they don't know basic history, nor do they do any sort of basic background check to their guests in Parliament. They simply hear that he fought the Russians and thus he has to be a good guy. The second way to analyze this is that they knew very well who this man was and still is, and expected that no one complained about it, thus normalizing the act of applauding a Nazi. Although I believe that people can be as dumb and stupid as the first way to analyze this suggests, I have no doubt that reality is closer to the second way of analyzing this. They knew very well who this Ukrainian Nazi was, because it's inconceivable to have guests in any parliament that they know nothing about. A simple background check would reveal who he was and what he stands for, and I'm sure this background check existed. But let's for a moment believe there was no background check and they really didn't know who the Ukrainian Nazi was. If that was true and they didn't know nor care to know the past of a single Ukrainian, how can they know anything about what's really happening in Ukraine and what Ukraine did in the past, let's say, 10 years, for example? How can they send weapons and ammo to a country they know nothing about? And the answer is simple. They do know what's going on in Ukraine and they do in fact support the Ukrainian Nazis and are proud to do so. So much so they wanted to applaud an Ukrainian Nazi in Canadian Parliament and in fact actually did just that. And in the Canadian context, this is especially bad because not long ago, the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, was calling everyone protesting against his government policies, Nazis. So, people that disagree with him and his government are Nazis. But Justin Trudeau and the Canadian Parliament just didn't know that the Ukrainian they invited to applaud in the chamber was actually a real Nazi. Sure, if you believe that, I have a bridge to sell you. And the Canadian government is also well known for a specific personality, Christia Freeland, the foreign affairs minister whose family tree is well known as the granddaughter of another Ukrainian Nazi, Michael Shomiak, which is why she is so adamant to support the Nazis in Ukraine as well. In fact, I would bet she had influence in calling Hunka into the Canadian Parliament because she has direct connections to Nazis by means of her family. Furthermore, why was a known Nazi allowed to live without issues, without being convicted of war crimes in Canada? This speaks volumes of the Canadian society and Canadian government, but also applies to the USA and Europe as a whole, where many Nazis live without issues and without facing consequences for their crimes. Why? Because North American and European governments support Nazis and have supported them for many years. 
In the United States particularly, this project of bringing Nazis to the USA even had a name. It was Project Paperclip. Instead of prosecuting these Nazis for the crimes they committed against humanity, the USA, but also Canada and Europe, decided to protect them so that they could use their expertise to improve the militaries of USA, Canada and Europe. This is why many Nazis live in peace and harmony in the USA, Canada and Europe, because the governments of those countries protected them after the end of the Second World War. This is also why USA, Canada and Europe have so many Nazi groups. They never disappear, because these governments made sure they exist. Recently, we even saw these Nazi groups in USA praising Joe Biden for sending weapons to Ukraine. Christopher, there's a presidential race going on right now. Are you going to vote in 2024? What do you think is going to happen? My vote is useless. I think Biden's better than Trump because he sends rockets to Ukraine. <laughs> in the, in support of Ukraine, you mean? Hell Ukraine! Hell Azov! Remember that the media always tried to put Nazi groups close to Donald Trump, but the reality is quite different, as is often the case when it comes to what the mainstream media reports. In fact, in this particular video of Nazis praising Joe Biden, we can see one well-known Nazi that was sent by the CIA to Ukraine to help his Nazi friends there kill civilians in eastern Ukraine in the Donbass region. Whenever Ukraine is the subject, there are always Nazis around it, but for many people this means nothing and it's just Russian propaganda. Reality is just not important for these people, they are brainless, clueless and cult fanatics that just follow the dogma, no matter what. For rational people, or at least people with a conscience, they think twice about supporting a cause that Nazi groups also support but not for the majority of people in USA, Canada and Europe. They will support Nazis if they are told to support them. Having said all this, do you want to guess what Justin Trudeau said after the scandal broke out that he and the entire Canadian parliament applauded a Ukrainian Nazi? Well, Justin Trudeau made a non-apology and talked about Russian propaganda. I also want to reiterate how deeply sorry Canada is for the situation this put President Zelensky and the Ukrainian delegation in. It is extremely troubling to think that this egregious error is being politicized by Russia and its supporters to provide false propaganda about what Ukraine is fighting for. This is absolute cult mentality, despite doing one of the biggest blunders in political history ever, Justin Trudeau talks about Russian propaganda. He literally applauded an Ukrainian Nazi, part of the most brutal and violent Nazi division, the SS, that burned women and children alive, yet Justin Trudeau is more concerned about Russian propaganda. Yeah. Turns out, as I've been talking about on this channel for many months, a channel that YouTube censors actively, the so-called Russian propaganda is actually the reality. And now let's focus on Zelensky for a little bit, because he's an integral part of this, as much or more than Trudeau and the Canadian Parliament are. Just like Trudeau, Zelensky knew very well who this Ukrainian Nazi was, because any Ukrainian that fought against the Soviet Union during World War II was a Nazi. In Western Ukraine, the part of Ukraine that receives all the weapons, ammo and money from USA, Canada and Europe, the national hero is Stepan Bandera, another Nazi collaborator responsible for killing thousands of Poles, Jews and Soviets, which includes Ukrainians. Zelensky applauded a Nazi without issues because Zelensky is a Nazi supporter and is the president of a Nazi regime in Ukraine. And this is far from the first time Zelensky has been among Nazis or awarded Nazis. On several occasions we've seen his bodyguards with Nazi symbols in their clothes, we've seen Zelensky visiting and posting pictures of Ukrainian soldiers with swastikas and other Nazi symbols. But for the idiots out there, which unfortunately are far too many in Europe and North America, this means nothing because Zelensky is supposedly Jewish. For these brain-dead idiots, somehow being Jewish prevents Zelensky from being evil, prevents him from supporting Nazis. Which is another example that these people know nothing of history. They don't know about the Jewish men in the Nazi army. They also don't know what happens in Palestine, among many other things. 
All that must be ignored because it shatters their idiotic, brain-dead argument that Ukraine cannot be a Nazi regime because its president is Jewish. I'm sure that if Vladimir Putin was Jewish, that brain-dead logic would not apply anymore, and the same people would say he's still evil, or even that he wasn't a real Jew. It's just the usual, the side I support is right and the side I don't support is wrong, which is what you'll find across USA, Canada and Europe. Absolute zombies that do not think for themselves and see only in black and white, good and evil, while ignoring the actual evil they support. Knowing history is very important, because when you don't know history, you are for certain going to repeat it. And that's what is happening right now, with North America and Europe's support of the Nazi regime in Ukraine, literal Nazis are being awarded, they are being applauded. The glorification and normalization of the most disgusting, psychopathic and violent ideology on this planet is done by the very same people in North America and Europe that are always talking about democracy and values, the complete opposite of what the Nazis they protect stand for. And these people are the ones that call Nazis and fascists to everyone that disagrees with them, while at the same time they are also the same people that create and approve laws in your country, that create taxes, that decide where your tax money will be used, namely being sent to the Nazis in Ukraine by the hundreds of millions. Let that sink in and understand that those protecting the Ukrainian Nazi regime are themselves the fascists that they claim to be against. This is so bad that I don't think North American and European societies can survive this. You cannot possibly support Nazis and yet have a normal functioning society, because you are normalizing extremism. And never forget that every year Russia makes a proposal in the United Nations to condemn the glorification of Nazism all around the world. Can you guess which country have never, ever supported this proposal to condemn the glorification of Nazism? That's right, Ukraine, the United States, Canada and the vast majority of European countries, the very same that support Ukraine today. The support for Nazism is very much alive in North America and Europe, and if you support Ukraine, you are a Nazi supporter too. I hope you like this, and I'll see you next time.